When doing any kind of scroll work, having a pair of scrolling tongs or scrolling pliers can be really handy. So today we're going to look at making a set of scrolling tongs with the blanks from Ken's Custom Iron. And it just so happens, Ken's is the sponsor of today's video. These come in two different sizes. The quick tongs are a little bit heavier and the rapid tongs are a little bit lighter. So it just depends on what you need. And a lot of people will probably want a pair of scroll tongs in both sizes. I'm going to start by drawing out the reins. Unlike most conventional tongs where I prefer a kind of a rounded rein that has a graceful taper to it, I actually want these to flare a little bit. I feel like you get a little bit better grip on scroll tongs that way and can get better leverage. So I'll end up with a flat taper that flares a little bit towards the end. Generally speaking, I don't think scroll tongs need to have real long reins. It's better to leave them a little bit heavy so that they can take the torque that you're going to be putting on these in use. I'm going to make sure I round the corners up so there are no sharp spots. I want these to be comfortable to hold on to. Take the time to make both halves match at this point. Remember, the hotter one is going to shrink more and be a little bit shorter when it's done. So it's okay for it to be a hair long at heat. Now I want to turn my attention to the jaws. These are not flat. These are typically round in profile or have a slight flat on the inside. But you want to make sure there's no sharp corners that are going to gouge your work. And again, make both halves match. These come with an offset already in them. If you're real careful and you don't mess that up, you may not have to do any work on that later. But it is easy to kind of straighten that offset out a little bit while you're rounding this up. So just make sure you double check that and correct any issues before you assemble the tongs. You do want the range of the tongs to be nice and smooth. So if you've got any real obvious lumps or bumps, Taking a hot rasp to it might be a good idea. Any light cleanup can be done cold with a regular file or a grinder of some sort if that's what you prefer. I want to thank Ken's Custom Iron for sponsoring today's video. Ken's offers a wide assortment of pre-cut tong blanks that make good quality tongs within the grasp of even the beginning blacksmith. And for the more experienced blacksmith, the pre-cut blanks might get you back to work a little bit faster than starting from scratch. But in addition to the tong blanks, Ken's has hand hammers and power hammers that they offer. And their power hammers are air supplied power hammers, so they run off of a separate air compressor. That makes them not only a little more affordable, but they also take up a smaller footprint in your shop. They also have a variety of other hand tools and various package deals for tongs and knife making kits, things like that. So I encourage you to use the link in the video description and check out Ken's Custom Iron. Now let's assemble these things. As with any tongs, the choice of how you put the hole in these is really mostly personal choice. You can punch a hole, it's faster. Theoretically, it's a little bit stronger because it displaces material instead of removing it. 
or you can drill a hole, which is theoretically a little bit weaker, but more accurate because the drill bit's a perfect size. In use, I don't think it really matters that much, so it's really just whatever you feel more comfortable with. Oftentimes, I like to punch them just a little undersize and then drill them to the exact size, and you get the best of both worlds. Kins does include the rivet with the tongs. Now it's almost guaranteed that your tongs are not going to open and close when you're done. That's something you just kind of expect. The jaws probably don't really line up quite the way you want. So it's going to be time to heat this up again. Do some gentle opening and closing. That breaks the rivet free just enough for these to operate properly. Line the jaws up. Get them closed up the way you want them. And everything should work just fine. Just need to do whatever it takes at this point, maybe a little bit of straightening in the vise, a little work with a twisting wrench, but try not to mess up all your hard work. Well, that makes for a couple of pairs of pretty nice scrolling tongs. One a little larger, and I've left the jaws spread for quarter inch material there. Parallel jaws are going to work best for scrolling to keep your scrolls straight. And then the other one I've left a little bit thinner than an eighth of an inch for really more delicate stuff. And we'll just see how these work. You can always go back and adjust them later. But I have a piece of flat bar stock in the fire. Let's go ahead and make a scroll and see how these work. I do hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video. Now let's do that scroll.
I can see just a few adjustments to be made and that's where the scroll tongs really come in handy. Thank you.